either we talking about seal as uh, material for large infrastructure projects or we talking about seal as material for uh, say spoons uh, signages you know straps like that and all that but i see that you know if i see my surrounding i see concrete jungle i don't see any thin delicate lines you know that we used to see in our buildings with like say delicate steel columns or delicate wood columns or you know there is that human touch through which you could you could see the brick walls or the stone walls or the mountains or you know i see that we we see everything is like this dead rocks and dead clay mounds and we don't see any trees or birds flying or anything like that in terms of our buildings you know so i'm just trying to see how we can bridge this gap between this really small scale scale usage of steel as structure to the large scale projects you know i particularly chose this image because it's just of a swing in a natural surrounding in one of our project the structure is exaggerated um for the swing the idea is that you make it so heavy that when you sit on it it gives you very gentle swing you know and as a structural engineer probably you would understand what kind of difference it makes and it's these small ideas that can actually inspire us to do bigger things so the presentation is in two parts the first part i'm going to just talk about some inspiration some odd silhouettes in the current backdrop and the part two i'm going to sh share some of the opportunities the way we have tried to deal with it so this is a distillery project in um, in on the outskirts of london it's bombay sapphire gin distillery by david hetherwick studio um you can see how beautifully we can um they have tried to incorporate steel structure in this natural surrounding um you know it it does not mean that it always have to be full of trees and all that but it's the some old building it was an old textile mill you know that they try to do things this is another project uh, so this is a an old mosque in bukhara in uzbekistan and how they were using wood and now in in a project of uh, this uh, center for contemporary art by norman foster how the steel is doing what once upon a time wood used to do this is another example this is a a very beautiful church in toulouse france where it is a steel column now our concrete columns are also not this thin these days you know so are we going forward or we're going backwards you know and we need these things to frame our so to say concrete backdrops this is a uh, olympic stadium munich olympic stadium designed by fry otto who just passed away we can see again how steel is doing something that we are still wondering how to do in this country and i think it is high time that we see the beauty in structure we have architects working with structure structural engineers in such a way that we can create things like this you know these are the things that inspires us we have to every time we get an opportunity we try to kind of think all over again this is another uh, set of interesting images this is um, a library in yale this is uh, just a small stand for putting candles in a church and this is another church in um, switzerland in lutzen and how you can see that the beauty of structure it is enhanced by sort of putting it in combination with other uh, materials again so this is you know it's part of infrastructure this is uh, part of, of a metro station how beautifully it is done so that um it feels very delicate against the steel surfaces this is a renovation of a church in ljubljana in slovenia and you can see how rhythm of steel is what is used to create these spaces in this really solid idea is not just to have straight copies of these things and say that okay let's do all of these things here but how many different ways you can use these steel in a structural way that uh, we can create these new, new silhouettes which is more delicate more human and more more enjoyable to live through this is um a very interesting project in santiago in chile this is again another interesting project in 
in in Paris, a project in uh, um, on the outskirts of Toulouse, uh, La Mirai. All of these, you can see that how at this detail level, the uh, very interesting project in in Rotterdam, how um, in um, 50 years ago, on in the center of traditional Paris, this exposed, everything exposed, structures, services, everything exposed was introduced by Renzo Piano in Centre Pompidou. This is a very interesting project in the middle of New York. And uh, I'm sure everybody knows this, the bird's nest by Herzog and Demereau, how the structure of steel is used just to create this lightness, you know, otherwise what we have been seeing is this really heavy concrete structures, you know. And uh, these are very interesting um, structures in Russia for water tanks, uh, towers, all of that. But point is how to make it very light, how to make it make these buildings in these remote areas, you know, where you don't have infrastructure, when you don't want to spoil the earth, you don't want to. Um, Sometimes the need is not for very long. You can take these materials off and you can recycle them. I still feel that icon and, um, you know, in terms of steel structure, Havra Bridge is still one of the finest things that we have had in this country and that was before independence. So I think uh, it's time that we address this uh, use and issue of steel structures in our smaller surroundings, not just large infrastructure projects, but also a lot of commercial building, a lot of residential buildings, and all of that. So with that, I'm going to move on to our presentation, our second part. So this is our uh, project. It's a, it's a, a weekend house. It's a, it's a lounge that uh, the structure is and you can see how it, because of that, it entire thing feels very light. It's it's next to an existing house. This is what it looked like during the construction, and it's inspired from the uh, the way brackets appear. If you see in the old city of Ahmedabad, this is also located in Ahmedabad. So how we have tried to defy the gravity with some of these kind of uh, elements. So this is another project. It's a, it's a lounge on top of a corporate house. Um, the building was constructed and we were called to do this project. And uh, um, we did not want to damage the building or touch the building. So how can we touch the terrace very lightly, you know? And so what we did, we created this platform of two feet by two feet, which, is the, which was the size of the um, tiles on the roof itself. So this entire thing that you see, this, this structure, all the tables, furniture, these lights, these planters, the backside serving table, all of that comes out of this two by two grid and it does not touch, uh, it does, does not penetrate the existing slab. So you can see how during the construction it looked like. You can see how everything is just coming out of that. And um, it's, it just happened that we could do this in this grid magically. So this is the exploded view of how the different elements were constructed during. Uh, this project was entirely remote controlled because we were traveling that time. And in three months, they put together the whole thing. So this is another project. The idea is that how, what I'm trying to show here is that how leaving the steel exposed, you do not always have to touch it. You can keep it far away. You can make these buildings which are very lightweight. So this is again another uh, terrace lounge where, where that we did. And it was an existing terrace uh, that we refurbished a little bit. And then we tried to do something over it that uh, touches the building very lightly, you know. So even, yeah, so there's a 
teak wood flooring and all the marbles and lighting and all of that. This is a proposal uh, for a high-end apartment. The idea of behind this building is that the entire thing, uh, structure, the surfaces, um, they are all like uh, frames and then you have some infills. But inside, if you see, the plan is uh, pretty much flexible. All these walls that you can see, actually, they can all modify. Only the services and the structure is fixed. Because this is a high-end apartment, we did not want to lock uh, you know, rooms in places, but we said that, you know, what if a bachelor comes and he wants a bathroom a size of a bedroom, you know, so it should be possible. And what we try to make sure that the way we treat, you know, with the surroundings, uh, it, it makes the, the view, the experience of this building very interesting because architecture is not just what you do inside the building, but how you work with the existing surrounding. So that's, that's the bird's eye view, how it would kind of appear. This is uh, another uh, residence. So the idea was here, every, it's, it's in Disa and uh, the place is very hot. But the clients, they also prefer that in the morning and in the evenings when it is very pleasant, the life revolves around this large veranda, you know. And we said that, okay, you know, we'll give you thick walls and then the building should kind of feel very light and it should uh, take off where this roof happens. So we try to make this as delicate as possible. And so it's just, it's, it's composite, it's, it's structure is steel, but then we give the infill with um, uh, reinforcement and concrete. And so that's what it looks like. If you see, this is the kind of uh, veranda, all the rooms and all the spaces, they go around that. This is what it looks like when it is finished from inside. Again, with you know some of these swings, how we try to experiment. Um, that's another view of what the building feels like. So this is uh, an experiment. Uh, we don't know when it's going to happen, but uh, we designed this for an artist who wanted to do something really cost-effective in this site. And we said, uh, okay, you know, half of the cost is foundation. Can we touch the ground lightly? And that's where it all started. Um, the other thing is that he said that I actually don't want this building to last very long, so you can make whatever you want. And we said, okay, then why not plant a banyan tree that can take over this in, say, 20 years or 40 years or 50 years like this, maybe 100 years. But so the structure is touching the ground very lightly. This is a particular, a very special kind of concrete that can actually uh, breathe. It is it can allow the water to go and uh, roots to grow through that. And eventually it can crack just the steel sheet that would be below the concrete would work like a shelter for this um, structure. Idea is that uh, what, what we were trying to look at is that, you know, we have these lot of situations when we feel a lot of disasters, a lot of uh, remote areas where uh, we think that uh, um, how to provide quick solutions in terms of structure. And so one of the things that we were trying to understand was that can we make a building that is like a kit of parts and we can bring it together also because it's a little bit far away, terrain is a little bit uneven and all of that. So we said, uh, why not try something like that? And I'm, I'm quite certain that we can make these buildings which are, it's not going to spoil the surroundings by like massive concrete foundations and you know, like affect the ecology and all of that, you can just have some precast blocks and put this because a lot of times we feel that, you know, we over design these structures. We, we think that it's going to last for 100 years, but we know that we, it's not. And we should, we can carefully do these things in such a way that we can create something very interesting that works with nature. So that's, uh, that's another residence. Um, the, um, it's, it's, it's a two-story structure where um, the clients, when the, the brief came, he said that he wanted something uh, that um, seemed like as simple as a hut. And uh, so we made, we made one floor and he said, uh, you know, I actually don't want to make the, didn't want to make the first floor, but why don't we make another floor? And we realized that with what we were doing, the scale, the way it was working out, um, the the conventional language that we were having with the building, the way it was it was very massive, and so we said, why not uh, 
use the roof um, in steel uh, in, in this way that it feels uh, something very delicate. And so we try to do it in such a way that it, the, the contrast created by introduction of steel uh, takes away a lot of heaviness that otherwise would be there in our uh, brick and concrete buildings. So the swing is uh, in, the, in this garden. This is a stair which is, a, which is again uh, very light and um, it's, it's, between the, it's between the two cubes uh, here. This is uh, another proposal that is going to happen very soon. So the client is saying that I want to move out, but I want to move out in one year, six months, I'll buy the land and six months I will give you to construct the house. What can you do? I'm, I'm yet to buy the land. And so we've designed this project where the skin is supposed to be the way site would uh, demand. So we may modify this if need be. Now what we are saying is that inside whatever that we do, it has to be uh, pre-assembled, everything uh, ready. And so we are going to do it entirely in steel. It would be ready in the workshop. And as soon as the foundation and the main frames of the outside surfaces, which is the um, surfaces which um, breathes, which allows the lights in, the client feels that there is no view in Ahmedabad, so it's supposed to be pretty dead. Okay, it's, it's almost monastic. Uh, so these are the kind of quality of spaces that it's going to have. Um, pure uh, surfaces and uh, steel as structure. This is, uh, I'm just showing this uh, as a possibility. So this is a part of a project which is, uh, we are um, restoring um, a 250-year-old uh, Haveli structure from North Gujarat in a, on the outskirts of Ahmedabad as a, a weekend house and how uh, we thought it was appropriate to introduce steel as some of is as couple of elements as a you know this roof structure that actually slides and opens the courtyard and it closes but only with steel we could get this delicateness that the wood carving otherwise had in the entire haveli and uh, also the stair we could uh, do it in such a way that it it works in contrast of the heavy walls and the carvings that are there in the building this is, um, we're calling it shopping strips, uh, it's a shopping um, arcade in uh, North Gujarat. Um, sorry. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward project because uh, it's, it's non-air conditioned, it is uh, simple shop after shop after shop. But we said how can we do this uh, in such a, such a way that people are always welcome, there is uh, there is a shade that you need in terms of light, but it also works as something iconic that uh, people can associate with. And so what we've tried to do is uh, the entire uh, front open space is this really light frames that uh, uh, works as a framing of otherwise uh, a pretty simple structure. So these are some of the views what uh, it appears uh, from when you see through the buildings. Okay, and this is the last project. It's a, it's a restaurant. Um, we, um, we have introduced this, uh, so it's a restaurant is actually inside, but we have, um, we, we propose this uh, structure on the outside as a green screen uh, to protect the building from this area and outdoor sitting from uh, direct sun because it's the southwest corner. Um, the, the reason why I'm showing this last is because actually I want to show it as uh, how, you know, again these small ideas, we can make these small modules, small systems even when we think that we don't have people, you know, who can carry out this infrastructure at sort of intermediate scales, um, you know, when we make a system or we make a module out of it, 
how it can just be done so easily. And so you can see that this is the structure in construction. This is uh, one of the view inside the restaurants. Uh, it kind of works as this light framing. So this is done in wood. And uh, these are the guys uh, who are actually responsible behind a lot of these projects. Um, and uh, this is what it looks like, you know, that uh, how frame by frame we constructed the whole thing and we put this uh, custom made ceramic pots and everything is uh, uh, drip irrigated and so you don't have to climb up, it is 16 feet, you can see how guys were installing it very easily. This is what uh, it looks like when it is uh, complete. That's all.